Petroleum National saw its 3Q net loss narrow considerably to 3.37 billion ringgit from 21.04 billion ringgit in 2Q on higher EBITDA and lower impairment losses on assets. Petronas said that, excluding asset impairment, it would have posted a net profit of 2.6 billion ringgit in 3Q versus a net loss of 900 million ringgit in 2Q. Quarterly revenue was 21% higher quarter on quarter at 41.08 billion ringgit due to an improved benchmark price for major products on the back of higher sales volume from petroleum products, liquefied natural gas and processed gas. However, on a year-on-year basis, the national oil firm posted PAT of 7.42 billion ringgit while 3Q revenue was down 25% from 51.11 billion ringgit. In a separate statement, Petronas CEO and President Tengku Muhammad Taufik noted that the sporadic easing of lockdowns resulted in the resumption of global economic activities which was reflected in its earnings. However, amid the fluid operating environment and prolonged volatility of oil prices, he said that Petronas is adopting a cautious outlook and anticipates the remainder of 2020 to be challenging. As such, Petronas will remain focused on its deliberate steps to reshape its portfolio, retool its human capital equation and focus execution at pace in managing the unpredictable business environment. Putrajaya via the Health Ministry has signed a preliminary purchasing agreement with Pfizer to obtain COVID-19 vaccines for 20% of the Malaysian population starting 2021. According to Bernama, PM Tansri Muhyiddin Yassin had inked the deal on November 24th to secure 12.8 million doses which would be used to immunise some 6.4 million Malaysians. Pfizer had earlier assured that based on its primary interim data, its COVID-19 vaccine showed 95% efficacy. It is scheduled to deliver 1 million doses in the first quarter of 2021, another 1.7 million doses in the second quarter, 5.8 million in the third quarter and the remaining 4.3 million doses in end 2021. Vaccination will be conducted in phases, with priority given to high-risk groups who are more susceptible to COVID-19. While Malaysians will be vaccinated at no charge, foreigners will be charged at a rate to be determined by MOH. Apart from Pfizer, MOH has also secured a deal with COVAX facility to obtain vaccines to immunise another 10% of Malaysians. Together, both agreements should provide vaccine access to 30% of Malaysia's population. Malayan Banking's 3Q earnings dipped by 2.3% to 1.95 billion ringgit as net operating income declined. In its filing with Bursa Malaysia, Maybank said revenue for the quarter was pretty much flat at 13.76 billion ringgit compared with 13.83 billion ringgit previously. Still, it declared a 13.5 cent per share interim dividend. Group Investment Banking returned to the black with a pretext profit of 172 million ringgit versus a pretext loss of 20.9 million ringgit previously on the back of higher other operating income, lower overheads, higher net interest income, and income from IBS operations, among others. Going forward, Maybank said it will prioritize its capital and liquidity strength, selectively expand its balance sheet in tandem with its risk appetite, and remain focused on its ongoing cost discipline. Net interest margin will remain under pressure given the significant interest rate cuts this year across its key markets, but the group will strive to grow current and savings deposits which carry a lower cost. Despite a dip in quarterly revenue, public banks' 3Q net profit improved by 2.2% to 1.39 billion ringgit from 1.36 billion ringgit. In its bourse filing, public bank attributed the improved performance to higher investment income, net fee and commission income, Islamic banking income, net interest income and other operating income. However, this was partially offset by higher loan impairment allowance of 285.4 million ringgit in anticipation of the potential effect of COVID-19. It was why although earnings improved, revenue declined 8.6% from 5.62 billion ringgit to 5.13 billion ringgit. 
On future prospects, founder and chairman Emeritus Tan Sri Tae Hong Piao acknowledges that the COVID-19 pandemic continues to pose significant uncertainties to the economic landscape and business environments. However, despite expectations that loan growth will remain modest this year, Public Bank expects to defend its market position in the domestic residential and commercial property financing by leveraging its established market presence. Axiata Group's net profit nearly doubled in 3Q, rising 97% to 352.99 million ringgit thanks to higher EBITDA, coupled with lower depreciation and amortization, forex loss and tax. Quarterly revenue dropped marginally by 1.6% year on year to 6.11 billion ringgit from 6.21 billion ringgit as a result of weaker performances from its operating companies except in Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and the infrastructure segment its board's filing showed. President and Group CEO Tan Sri Jamaluddin Ibrahim, however, stressed that 4Q will be extremely challenging again as some of its opcos countries including Malaysia remain under lockdown. According to Deputy Group CEO Dato Izadin Idris, Axiata is expecting a low single-digit percentage decline in revenue, reiterating that the group is allocating less than 6 billion ringgit in capex. Ultimately, he feels Axiata can weather through the storm. Nonetheless, Axiata's balance sheet experienced one of its best times with 10.7 billion ringgit in cash balance. Axiata expects to end FY20 with a healthy debt profile and about 6 billion ringgit in cash, which would give it a huge cushion to endure most pandemic and economic challenges.